Hey guys, do you want to learn how to make some of the coolest finishes with some of the neatest products? Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so what I'm going to try to show you guys in this video is I'm going to kind of take you back to my faux finishing days when I used decorative foils on all kind of substrates, on furniture, uh, you name it, on walls. I used to use it, and I love the product. It's very, very easy to use. And so today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you several different foils with different patterns. And then I'm going to show you with one very easy technique how to get different looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with just a sample board. This is a half inch MDF. So what we've done is we routered our edges so that we have a quarter inch round over so that when we do apply our epoxy, our epoxy is going to roll over that edge and give me a really pretty edge. I put two coats of bare paint and primer in black. Now you can also use the Stone Coat countertop undercoating. If you do use that product, you don't have to wait overnight. You can actually pour your epoxy or you can go to the next step, which in our case is going to be putting the adhesive down in four hours. So if you use a latex paint, you're going to want to wait 24 hours. If you use the Stone Coat undercoating, you'll be able to do this in four hours. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna use is a product called Artsyville. I'll have a link in the description below for you guys. Uh, I get this from uh, a really good friend of mine, Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio. She developed her own line of foil adhesive, and in my personal opinion, my professional opinion, I think it's one of the very best adhesives on the market. The reason I like this adhesive is once I roll it, it's going to take about 45 minutes to get what I call tacky. And once it's gotten to that stage, it's never going to go beyond that stage of being tacky. It's not going to dry. I'm not going to have a window that I have to work with. I can actually wait two or three days before I go to the next step because it's never going to get completely dry on me until I put my foils on top of it. So it gives me a huge open time and open window to be able to do my project. I've poured a little bit of the product out on my pan and I'm just going to roll it on just like I would paint. I'm just using a quarter inch nap roller. You can also use a foam roller. And you just want to get it on nice and even. And remember, anywhere there's adhesive, that's where your foil is going to stick. So you want to make sure that you do your edges. You've got good coverage on your edges. Now, if you're working in a really hot environment or a high humidity, your product's probably going to set up a lot quicker than if you're in a cool AC uh, building or uh, temperature where it's really cooler. But usually you're looking at about 45 minutes worth of time for it to set up. Now, if you're doing this over a countertop, what you would want to do is prep your countertop First, if you're going over a countertop that's shiny or slick, maybe a uh, laminate, or you're going over uh, natural stone, is you're going to want to first prime your substrate with a good bonding primer. And the reason you want to do that is because you want to make that surface, which is non-porous because it's shiny, you want to give it something that all of these products can grab a hold of and uh, have good adhesion. So the first thing you'd want to do, like I said, if you're doing this over laminate or you're doing this over uh, natural stone, get yourself some 120 grit sandpaper, sand it really well, clean it. Two coats of XIM is what I like to use. It's a bonding primer that I really like. Put that on there, let that dry. 
Then you will come to the stage where I'm at now where I put two coats of the bare paint and primer or two coats of the stone coat countertop undercoating. At that point, you're gonna be where I am here applying your uh, adhesive. All right, you'll see I'm back rolling. I'm really not trying to get rid of lap lines. All I'm doing is make sure that my product is on evenly and uh, nice and flat. So don't overwork the product. You, want, you don't want to keep going back and forth, but if you do have bigger areas, maybe where it's a little thicker, just take that roller and very, very, very lightly just kind of feather your product out and you'll be ready to go. But don't worry about lap lines. You'll be fine. All right, so the adhesive has now set for about 45 minutes to what we call a full tack. So what we can do, the way you can kind of tell if you're at the right um, timing is I'm able to touch the top and if you listen, it makes a popping noise. And also there's no stickiness on my finger. If this were not quite ready yet, if I touched it and brought it back, my finger would be sticky. So this is a really good way to determine if uh, it's at the right time to go to the next step. And so it is. All right, this is my favorite part, guys. I love this. I'm so excited about decorative foils. All right, so decorative foils, all it is is a pattern that's been metalized onto a piece of plastic. It's a metalization onto a piece of plastic. So this is actually the, the pattern that we're going to put down on and then when we pull the plastic off, that's what you're gonna see. Now it's a little misleading because a lot of us want to put it face down because, well, that's where the pattern is. But we're gonna do the opposite of that. We're gonna actually lay it this side down onto the, uh, the glue. All right, so there's a couple of ways you can do this. You could lay it just out flat, but I always like to add a little bit of, um, I guess, extra texture look to it. So I'll take this and I'll actually kind of crunch it up a little bit. and give it a little body, and it's gonna give it one more layer of visualization once we put it down onto the glue. All right, so I'm gonna come on here, and I'm just gonna lay it down. All right, then I'm gonna come in just with a soft cloth, and I'm very lightly going to rub it down. Now what I'm not doing is I'm not doing it in a circle because if I do it in a circle that circular pattern is going to show through when I pull it off. Also what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go all the way to the edge of my um, piece of foil. If I do what will happen is it will develop a, a really hard edge and I don't want that. I want it to be a very soft edge. So I'm just gonna go almost to the, to the edge of that. Rub it in. And I can even come check it too. I can pull it back. And you can see that I'm already getting some adhesion there. And if I were going for a very light color, uh, a, a, just a little bit of that pattern, I could stop right there but I want to have full coverage. So I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna come in with my, my brush and I have just a very small little plastic scrub brush and I'm gonna really get down and get that foil on to the surface. Again, I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge. Get my edges. Oh, that's so pretty. All right. Now, you can see that I have little air bubbles, and that's okay. That was caused by me crunching it up, and that's all right. That's gonna give us some really cool little designs on the, on the surface. All right, so I'm gonna pull it off.
Now let's just say that I wanted to go back and, and add a little bit more pressure on there. I can go back, I can re-scrub, and then I'm gonna get 100% coverage. All right, so we're gonna, see I like that look of the black lines. I, that's why I crunched it up because that's what I'm getting and that's what I wanted. All right, so now you can see that I have a soft edge. I got a little bit close, so I, I have a little bit of a hard edge, but we're gonna overlap with the other color and you're not gonna see that. All right, so now what we're doing <clears throat> is I'm gonna give you three, uh, four actually different patterns. Instead of just doing one, one pattern, I want you guys to see uh, how different foils look. Even though we're gonna do the exact same uh, technique over the top, I want you to see different foils and how they really look stunning once you put the epoxy on there. All right, so that was a gold confetti, and I'm gonna link all of the foils and their names um, in the description of the video. So make sure to check that out. All right, so that was gold confetti. Now we're gonna come in with my favorite. And my whole bathroom, actually, guys, my shower and my countertops are done in this pattern. And it is absolutely stunning. All right, so we're gonna lay it down. I think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna crunch this one up. Oh, my husband's telling me, yes, I am. He likes it crunched. Okay, so here we go. Crunch it up. And actually, when you do crunch it up, it, it actually makes it a little bit easier to handle. All right, so I'm gonna overlap this. All right. This is a little tough because I'm short. All right, same thing. Come in with my terry cloth. Very lightly lay it down first. And if you have a lot of wrinkles and you don't want that many wrinkles, just pull it up and then you can pull it flat. Get my edges. Now, it doesn't matter if I go all the way to the edge because now this is not sticky, all right? Once that foil is on top of the ad uh, adhesive, it is no longer sticky. So I could actually go all the way to the edge and because I already have a uh, foil there, it's not gonna leave a hard line. All right. Now what I want to not do is to accidentally go over this because I could scratch it. So make sure that you're careful that once you do pull your plastic up, that you are careful with your uh, finish until you get some epoxy over the top of it. Is that not absolutely gorgeous? You could just put clear epoxy over this, which is actually what's in our bathroom, and you could stop. This, this is just gorgeous. That epoxy just gives it so much depth. So now we're gonna come in with a really pretty, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Blues, it's kind of a hologram type of a foil. And we're gonna lay that one down. Now this is a little bit easier if you're if you got long arms, I don't have long arms. So this is, you know, a little tough on me. You can readjust it. Once you lay it down, you can readjust. Now, you could see that I did not crunch up this one. So when you would use this uh, of not going all the way to the edge, is if you were doing a whole countertop, and you were having to do it in sections. 
you would this is when you would use the um, the technique of not going all the way to the edge because you want your pattern to be seamless so here even though it's different kinds of foil you can see how it just kind of bleeds in and there's not a really hard edge if these were the same pattern you would not be able to see where one of the foil stopped and the other one started Okay, so I have a little bit of void here, so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna put, because you can see, now see, this is a really good example. See how when I pull back the plastic, how I still have a little bit of that um, pattern on the plastic? That means that I still have um, some more that I can pull off. So I'm gonna put that back down, and I'm gonna re-scrub it. Now when I pull it off, look how much more comes off now. And I have more coverage. If I start seeing that I didn't press long, hard enough, I can come back and I can go back and do it again. See, so I'm, come, I'm having that one little piece. I'm gonna come back, lay it down. Okay, so this is my very favorite foil. It's called Pebbles, and it is, I, I just, I love it. So I'm gonna lay it down. All right, so you see I still have a little bit right here that my foil didn't go all the way to the end. So i tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start using some leftover pieces and fill all this in. All right, so I have some salvage here. So now I'm just gonna start adding it. and just kind of modge podge it on there together. Now this is really fun because if you had two or three different foils that you wanted to layer, this is how you would do it. You could actually get different patterns. In fact, I think I'll do that. Let me grab some of that gold. All right, so I'm just gonna take over leftovers to show you guys that you can uh, just blend patterns together. Now you see how I'm not really pushing really hard. I think I had a little bit of epoxy right there. <laughs> I'm gonna come in and see if I can put that. Yeah, I had something sticking right there so it's not gonna it deactivated the, the glue. But I'm gonna come right here and you showing you guys how you can take different patterns, layer them on top of each other, and really get some neat looks. Anywhere that there hasn't been any foil is still going to be sticky. So if I run my hand over here and I feel any sticky spots, I can actually take that foil and it'll stick. 
Now, once everything has got foil over it, no more stickiness. All right, so you can see without anything else on it that these are stunning. These are just so pretty. Look how they catch the light. And you'll need to go to Artistic Painting Studio's website. She literally has hundreds and hundreds of foils. Um, and and you, it's just endless. You, there's so many things that you can do with this. And um, I love layering them underneath the epoxy. It's just, it's just a way to get a finish that you just can't get any other way. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna pour some epoxy and we're gonna go to the next step. Now I'm gonna be using Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. I'm using their regular countertop epoxy. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. And I'm gonna be using three ounces per square foot. All right, so I'm gonna pour in part B first. The reason I do that is part B is thinner, less viscous. I just seem to get a more accurate reading when I pour part B in first, as part A is quite a bit thicker and it really falls down through part B a lot quicker, giving me a more accurate reading. If you do part, part A in first, that's fine. It's not a problem. All right, and part A, like I said, is quite a bit thicker. It's gonna fall down to the bottom. It'll be a lot easier to measure. Mix for two minutes. When I start mixing, I mix very slowly to begin with. I don't really mix too fast because if I do, then I'm really entraining a lot of air, so I keep my mixer paddle going pretty slow. All right, so once I've mixed with my paddle, I'll come in with the paint stick and I'll hand mix it, and then I'll get that material that's on the edge, I'll scrape that and then stir that into the mixture. I'll do that three or four times. And what that's doing is ensuring that all of that material that's on the side of those buckets that may not be mixed up thoroughly, I'm bringing it into the mixture and I'm making sure that I'm mixing it up all together. So that way when I pour my product onto my surface, I'm not gonna get sticky spots. I decided at the last second that I was gonna add a little bit of secret sauce. So I'm coming in with a very, very tiny bit of gold dust, and I mean a little bit. I just want it to get kind of get a shimmer and kind of catch the eye. That's literally all I put in there. All right, so now, here we go. I'm gonna just pour out the epoxy over the top. This is where I usually tell you guys that if you want to use a trial, you can. Um, but on this instance, I really do uh, want you to use your hands uh, or you could use a uh, roller if you wanted to do that because the foils are very uh, delicate. They can be scratched really easy um, until the epoxy obviously cures. Uh, but you could definitely scratch that with your trial. So be very, very soft, and I'm just gonna go ahead and use my hand. I like to use my hand anyway. I love just seeing how just the epoxy over the foils just give it such a layer of depth, and it's just gorgeous. Okay, so once it's all leveled out, we'll torch it and get your edges. And I like, at this point is when I really do like to use my hands because what I can do is I can take that epoxy and I can roll my fingers over that edge and help that epoxy to roll over. And then it's gonna actually cause those drips to go all the way under the edge and not form a, um, a hard edge right there, a hard ledge or have any kind of surface tension. All right, so we'll torch it out. And that's one thing about Stone Coat. No matter if you get bubbles when you're mixing the product, those bubbles are released so easily by just giving it a quick torch. Now guys, like I said, my bathroom is done all in leopard. And this is, this is where I stopped. I just have the clear over the leopard and it is absolutely stunning. Um, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to a next step and we're gonna actually do a technique on the epoxy. But because this is very fresh epoxy, 
I want it to set up for about 30 minutes before we go to the next step. So we're gonna hang out, let it set, let it start to get a little bit thick, and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so it's been setting here about 30 minutes, and what that's done is allowed the epoxy to start setting up. So now the pattern and the technique that we're fixing to do it's not gonna move as much, and that's why I like to let the epoxy set up before we go to the next step. All right, so this is what we call granification. And um, the best thing that I've found that works is just your black gloss paint. The 2X gloss works the best. Now you can use many different colors to do this. You don't have to use the black but the black, in my experience, works the best, and that's why I like it. I really like that look it gives. All right, so this is a technique that you guys will definitely need to practice because uh, there is kind of a learning curve, and it has a lot to do with how much of that spray paint actually gets onto the surface. You don't want it to be really, really thick, but you want it to be opaque enough to where you can't really see the, the pattern underneath it really, really well. So there is that fine line, so I suggest that you guys definitely do some sample boards and practice this. Uh, also, the temperature that you're doing it in does make a difference. So if you're doing this in really cold temperatures, it's gonna react a little bit different than if you're doing it in a more warm environment. Now, I'm only gonna do one section at a time. I'm not gonna do the whole piece so that you guys can kinda see what we're doing. All right, so. Wear your PPE. This is a spray paint, so you want to protect yourself um, or do it and make sure you do it into a ventilated area. You don't want this spray paint to sit very long. All right, so have your alcohol ready. And I'm not going to just spritz it on very fine. I want more of a bigger drop, so I'm going to use my hand and I'm just going to very lightly drip over the top. Now you also want to be very, very aware of how much alcohol you're putting on the surface. Now I'm going to come in with some isopropyl alcohol that's got mica powders mixed in. And this happens to have gold. You don't have to use a colored mica. You could just keep it with the uh, clear alcohol. But I just wanted to add a little bit extra on top. Again, I'm not coming in with a lot of alcohol. Now you just have to leave it alone and walk away. Don't keep adding alcohol because if you do, what's going to happen is going to cause it to run off the edges and it's going to get very blurry. So you have to be able to walk away and let this finish do its thing. So I love this. This is really cool. And as it moves, it's going to get really a cool looking effect on top of it. All right, so let's continue with the rest of it. All right, again, here we go. Now, what I don't want to do is spritz alcohol and then immediately come on top of it with spray paint. So that's why I was really careful when I was laying my alcohol down that I didn't spritz it onto this area here because it will cause a different effect if you put your spray paint over the top of alcohol. And I'm just kind of letting it drip from my fingers. I'm not putting a lot. Just kind of flick it. Some of these areas you may want a little more spray paint, maybe not quite open it up so much. You can just use your fingers and kind of just spritz that. So we'll let that continue to move. Now you could see where we layered the different uh, foils, how cool that looks. Let's add a little bit of the gold now. Now before you make any judgment calls on if you need to add 
any more spray paint or if you need to add any more alcohol, you really need to let this set a good 10 minutes or so because it's going to react right in front of you. And if you, if you add too much paint immediately, if you see a spot that you're like, oh, I really need to take care of that spot, and you add more to that area, um, then you're gonna get too much. And if you get too much alcohol, like I said, it's gonna cause your surface to be very blurry and it's gonna run off because this epoxy is still continuing to move. So I love this. We're gonna let it sit for just a little bit and then we'll come back and look at it. Okay guys, it's been about two and a half hours. Um, so the product has really kind of slowed its moving down. It'll move a little bit more, but the pattern is pretty much gonna stay just like this. And it is absolutely stunning. So our next step would be tomorrow, we'll come in, we'll flood coat it, and then we'll come back and we'll put the ultimate top coat. That's gonna give this finish a super high durability. All right, guys, uh, all of these products that we used uh, are available either on my website or I have a link on my website to Artistic Painting Studios. This is where you'll find all of the foils and the foil adhesive. Check out Jennifer's website. She is an amazing artist and she's got some phenomenal products. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We're really doing good at getting our numbers up and we appreciate everyone that's subscribed. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Tell me maybe what you would do with something like this. Would you do a piece of furniture? Would you do a countertop? Let me know. And remember, until next time, guys, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative.